According to the news from the palace, this morning the peace of the palace was disturbed due to the Turkish problem in the religion of Islam. As it is known, there are many hadiths that describe Turks as irreligious and non-Muslim enemies. Apparently our Supreme Leader and His Majesty President Recep Tayyip Erdogan also read one of these hadiths when he got up in the morning. Recalling the heavy duty he had undertaken, the Great Khan, Recep Tayyip Erdogan I, panicked and started to attack anyone who came before him. More precisely, while he was attacking with words, his guards were beating the people he insulted. The condition of those who were beaten is very serious. Because we should not forget that President Recep Tayyip Erdogan goes even to the toilet with at least 300 security guards, and that the number of these guards sometimes exceeded 50,000, except for the toilet. In fact, according to the figures given to us, 12 palace servants died among those beaten by the order of the Almighty, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. But no official statement has yet been made about them. In order to throw the corpses of the employees, whose relatives did not come and ask about, into the bottomless pit in the palace garden. Funerals such as throwing the bodies of people who were not investigated by their relatives into bottomless pits and burying them in concrete have been practiced for the last 20 years. It is a known fact that thousands of forlorn corpses are buried in constructions such as Istanbul Airport and bridge projects. When we asked about the hadith that caused the grave events in the palace, our source in the palace replied as Bukhari Jihad Hadith number 179. Here is the hadith. The Messenger of Allah said, Doomsday will not break out until you Muslims fight the Turks, who are a nation with chipped eyes, red faces and flat noses. Their faces are like leather-covered shields. Doomsday will not come until you Muslims fight this people who wear shoes made of hair, the Turks. It is a situation that every conscious Muslim knows, even if he cannot express it openly, that Turkishness is haram in Islam. However, our palace sources, who said that the point reached after 20 years of struggle was not enough, continued as follows, both the bad picture in the last election polls and the advancing age of our Supreme President, our Sultan Recep Tayyip Erdogan who already has neurological and psychiatric disease and the fact that he had to lecture for at least 10 hours a day to keep his constituency together for 20 years, increased the panic and depression in the current master of the Muslims, namely Erdogan and made him lose control. In the eyes of the unbelievers, this image is multiplied with 10 when you are a crazy, retarded and psychopathic person, ha, this is the current state. But we are satisfied with what comes from him as we are with what comes from Allah. So we asked our new sources why they were speaking in chorus, and they all coughed and started speaking again in perfect synchronization. Tens of thousands of civil servants work in the palace. We are all relatives and friends of our president and his wife. And we pray a lot and recite Arabic prayers with Anatolian accents and mostly in a wrong way. We do not have any qualifications other than these. The reason why we are employed at the palace is the order of our religion, which tells us to favor family and relatives. Mashallah, our sultan and his wife have plenty of relatives. Our great family is like a rabbit colony. Of course, as everyone knows, each of us has five or ten salaries, but 80% of this money actually goes to our sultan's pocket, on which condition we can become civil servants at the palace. Anyway, we have taken this road to work collectively because we had difficulties in finding things to do. For example, if tea is to be brought to the Almighty, the light of the seven worlds, our president Recep Tayyip Erdogan, 50 people brew the tea, another 50 load the tea on a giant royal litter, and a hundred people carry the giant royal litter. When the tea arrives at our president, 1200 servants lined up from the kitchen to the sultanate office convey two sugar cubes wrapped in gold leaf paper with basmala and prayers. And the 80 people at the end of the queue all ask in unison, our honorable president, would you order sugar in your tea? He says no. In a similar way, we, 80 of us speak in chorus as the secret news source of the palace. Yes, it is a very silly and useless job but we do not carry stones and at least 50,000 liras a month enter our pockets. At least 12 times the minimum wage. We were a little surprised by this answer given to us. When we asked our palace sources why they spoke so openly without fear, they gave us the following answer in chorus again. What we have done for 20 years, we have done publicly, and our votes have always increased. We were caught unintentionally before, but as we got the support of the people, we became more arrogant and corrupted, and as we got more arrogant and corrupted, the support of the people increased. In other words, every bad deed we have done has returned to us as the favor of the people. At the end, doing disgraceful things and humiliating ourselves have become a vital policy for our government. The inventor of this policy is our Supreme President, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. 
Maybe it wasn't something he did on purpose at first, but life taught him that. When we reminded our sources about the ongoing Turkish crisis in the palace, they started to talk about the daily grave events in the palace and replied as follows. At first, when the chaos broke out in the palace, no one could understand the situation. The president would utter a word to anyone who came before him, and when they answered, he had them beaten by his bodyguards. Then, when he started to have his guards beat each other as well, the problem became clear. He was beating Turkish speakers. You know, Turkishness is forbidden in our religion. In this case, Turkish is also haram. As we are ignorant peasants, we do not know any other language, and although we hate Turkish, we never appreciate those who speak a foreign language. Our president is also a person who has those who know foreign languages booed in the squares during his election campaigns. Of course, if you ask the president what language he speaks, he will say he speaks Ottomanish. The trick is to use one or two words of Arabic origin. We call it Ottomanish. You know, the Anatolian villager, who can't even write his name, loves Ottomanish, hates Turkish and thinks that the corrupted dialect he speaks is Ottomanish. Anyway, back to the situation in the palace, pretending to speak either Ottoman or a foreign language in the palace was useless after a few minutes. This time, our Supreme President Recep Tayyip Erdogan started to get us all beaten because he could not understand what we were saying. We have sold all the wealth of this country, we have divided the people into ethnic and religious-based enemy camps, we have destroyed the Turkish national consciousness. We have condemned the people to misery. We have carried out construction projects guaranteed by the state, by which people will pay tribute to the dynasty of our almighty president for at least a hundred years, we have turned the Turkish army into a buffoon, and we have turned the Turkish judiciary into a mindless pet. It was not enough, we started brutal civil wars in Islamic countries such as Syria and Iraq, which resulted in importing a foreign population of at least 10 million from there and transferring a significant part of the resources to these new respected citizens. The intelligent Anatolian people, who are overwhelmed by Turkishness and hate the Turkish nation, have rewarded us every time for this policy. But we forgot one thing. The Turkish language. In order to destroy Turkish, we need to replace it with a new language, but we do not have a language other than the language we falsely call Ottomanish, which is nothing but the same language we are speaking at the moment. A good education is required to learn a second language, and you also develop your own language while learning a second language. We call this the Recep Tayyip Erdogan language paradox. As soon as our sources finished speaking, they all sighed deeply. When we asked whether the spiral of violence that spread due to the Turkish crisis in the palace was continuing, they advised us to relax and replied as follows. Emine Erdogan, the wife of our great leader, came to our aid. Things changed when the poor woman came back from shopping. She got angry because of the chaos she saw while she was piling 20 tons of mangoes to be dried at the palace later and 80 tons of clothes in the entrance hall of the palace and shouted, Why have you gone crazy again, you mindless ape? Our Supreme Sultan, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, screamed back, Who are you calling crazy, you shanty hag, and ordered 800 bodyguards to flog Emine Erdogan. However, since half of the guards were from Emine Erdogan's tribe, a conflict on the scale of the Battle of Bad broke out among the guards. Of course, would Emine Erdogan stop? Never. Quickly holding dried mangoes in her hand, she started running up the stairs towards the most highly revered leader of all times. When she got closer, she said while crying and screaming, You have ruined my life, you skinny gorilla, you crazy dotard, die so I can have a peaceful life, and began tossing dry hard mangoes at the dotard's head. Our president, whose head was injured and covered in blood, rolled the nearest giant Chinese vase down the stairs onto Emine Erdogan. But we tell you, that woman is a cunning vixen, of course, she fled to the side and saved herself, but many of the guards were injured, so far no one has died. But I guess five people were in a coma. At that time, when about 80 doctors came and stuck the syringe containing the necessary medicine on the neck of our president, our Sultan Recep Tayyip Erdogan came to his senses and hugged Emine Erdogan crying. We all breathed a sigh of relief when he started crying and shouting, how naive and happy we were when we lived in the slum. We were poor, we used to dress like clowns, but we were so happy. However, we can never say that the issue of Turkishness, which has not been resolved for 20 years, was resolved with the reconciliation of Mr. and Mrs. Erdogan. Because the issue is different. Although our president seems to have calmed down with the effect of the drug he took, it is certain that we will all be arrested for treason if we lose the elections to be held within a year. Of course, we have put our heads on the execution blocks for our cause, we came here putting on our execution shirts. It's a different matter. 
We all want to be a martyr by being executed after being convicted of treason, theft and a thousand kinds of dishonor. But ultimately we are humans thus we are scared, it is not easy being a hero. Silence. When we said that we had the impression that the palace was pessimistic about the solution of the Turkish problem, namely Turkishness, which Islam has forbidden, they replied as follows. There are two important facts we should not forget. The first important fact is that, as we said before, we turned the Turkish army into a buffoon, and we did this with the help and collaboration of the infamous religious community that has the same Islamic consciousness as us. Ha, huh? are we the only bad side in this business? Of course we are not. Apparently we had all exaggerated the so-called power and intelligence of the Turkish army, till the time we realized that it was under the command of idiots who surrendered to all the unlawfulness and dishonesty we committed in partnership with the community of Fethullah Gulen. Those so-called commanders said, we trust the justice system. As if all the conspiracy we had been committing with the help of our conspicuous collaborators in the judicial system had something to do with justice. When we got the support of the Anatolian villagers, who are full of mindless grudge and hatred due to their traditional moral values, we pulled the plug of the Turkish armed forces, which had almost begged to be flogged just in order to look as a democratic organization, and established today's army with no national identity which means a useless army. As you might have seen, friends and relatives of our presidential tribe have been employed as active duty soldiers. Speaking of which, and in the light of what the latest surveys have told us, we are calling out to Fito, His Holiness Fethullah Gulen Hodja Effendi. Oh sir, let's meet and act on minimum common ground, we are walking on the same path, our only request from His Excellency Hodja Effendi is to admit that he has sometimes done wrong to our president. Know that we are not expressing this according to our minds, but by the instruction of our supreme leader, Almighty Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Returning to our previous topic, the second important fact that we should not be pessimistic is this. Qadir Masrolu, the greatest historian of Islamic history, spoke until the end of his life freely thanks to the insanity reports he had received long time ago. What a stupid system, get the insanity report, then do whatever you want. Anyways. Our almighty president Recep Tayyip Erdogan owes all his knowledge of history to Qadir Misiroglu, who produced and expressed the false information that the Dardanelles War and the Turkish War of Independence were waged by Syrian Sunni Arabs, and that 250,000 Syrian Sunni Arabs fell as martyrs at Gallipoli Front alone. He then added that Afghans, Africans, Pakistanis and the like had fought in these wars as well. Thanks to these false claims, at least two-thirds of our voters are convinced that everyone has rights on Turkey except the Turks. This is an incredible feat, the achievement of a subpar man with an insanity report. Therefore, there is no need to be pessimistic. In the end, Islam will be victorious. Even if it is said in authentic hadiths that Islam will gradually weaken and disappear, we do not respect these hadiths which are the opinions of our Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Whatever Muhammad peace upon him says victory is Islam's.